How's it going? This is Oren Kaplan again. I'm here with another tutorial. This time I'm not going to do After Effects. I'm actually going to do Photoshop. Uh, here in Fix It in Post, we usually do a bunch of visual effects and After Effects, but almost every single time we do that, we need to use Photoshop to fix something. So today I am going to do a little Photoshop tutorial on touching up someone's face. Uh, it doesn't have that much to do with visual effects, but it does have to do with fixing things in post. So today I'm just going to show you uh, touching up a photo. Here's a photo of my younger brother who has his own klezmer band, uh, if you guys know what that is. And here's his clarinet, which is, I don't know if there's many girls listening to this, but it's like the coolest instrument in the world. Who needs rock guitars when you can have clarinets? I uh, touched up this photo a little bit, and you can see here's the after photo. So the before photo and the after photo. And... I'll show you a little bit closer up. This is the before and this is after. It's actually not a horrible before photo, um, but I couldn't really find anyone else that would let me zoom this close up on their face and talk about it on YouTube. So here is our original photo. And you can see here on the layers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label these layers so that you guys can follow along with me. Um, now, touching up in Photoshop is a, kind of a controversial thing. I know a lot of people don't like it where in, in magazines people's weights change and, you know, their skin is smoothed out, but it's just something that you do. And I don't know, from a visual effects perspective, I think it's like really cool that you can do whatever, you can make whatever you want to make in the computer. Um, there's also like a million different ways that people do this. So I might even do another tutorial on this. Uh, something more interesting is probably doing a female portrait instead of a male portrait. In this example, I just took this photo with one light with my camera on a rooftop real quick. Um, it doesn't come out that bad, but with women, there's, there's more things that you would do. So if anyone wants to send me in a photo of a woman that they would like for me to Photoshop, as long as you own the rights, I will do a tutorial on that as well. So let's start. Um, so the very first thing I do on every photo I, uh, I touch up is I make a copy of it. And so to do that, we're going to click over here on the original layer, and we're going to hit Control or Command J on the Mac. And we we're making a copy of it. And that way I can always kind of go back to my original reference to see if what I'm doing is actually making things better or worse. And once I've made that copy, I start fixing all the blemishes. So I hit the J key to use the Spot Healing Brush. You can see here um, there's a, a bunch of different types of healing brushes. The spot healing brush is really great for just little skin blemishes. So you can see, you just kind of click it. You can use the bracket keys to make the spot, the healing brush bigger and smaller. And I just kind of go around the face and say, oh, you know, maybe this redness looks a little weird. I'll draw a line on that. A couple hairs out of place. Um, you know, these freckles, there's nothing wrong with them, but sometimes things look a little nicer without freckles. And you know, maybe a couple stray hairs that weren't shaved perfectly. Let's see what else. By the way, I'm holding down the space key to turn my cursor into a hand, and that lets me go around the photo. The other thing that I really like to do in Photoshop, I'm going to zoom out, is I like to work in full screen mode. When you're working in windowed mode, I find it very annoying. because I can move the, the image around, uh, which does, is not something that you can do when you're in windowed mode. So to do that, I hit the F key, and this gives me a full screen mode with the gray background. If I hit it one more time, it'll give me a full screen mode with the black background. And the tab key is what lets me bring all my palettes, uh, make them appear and disappear on the screen. A lot of you probably already know all this stuff. But for now, we're gonna stay with this gray background, and we can navigate our document like that. Okay, so once I'm done using the healing brush, um, I move over to the stamp, which it, the rubber stamp, which is the same as the cloning brush, and that's over here. I hit the S button, sorry, the S key to access it, and this gives him, lets me do kind of broader strokes. So right now I, I ha, he has some stray hairs here. They don't look that bad, but for the sake of this tutorial, maybe I'll cover them up. So I hold down the Alt key to choose a color that I like in an area of his forehead that I want to copy over these hairs. And again, I just hit the Alt key, 
and I have my opacity set really low. It's 11%. Usually, I actually, I don't know why, but for some reason, I like putting it at 17%, some random number. So I'll hit, hold down the Alt key, select the area of the skin that I like, the color that I like, and then I will use that and paint over his hair. And I use a really soft brush. Its uh, hardness is set to zero. And again, if the brush is too big, if you need to do finer adjustments, you can use the bracket keys to make things smaller. But the important thing, as far as I'm concerned, is to just keep resampling areas. Because if you only sample one area, then it'll start looking like an exact copy. I'll show you an example. Like if I just sampled this area and I had my opacity up a little bit higher, if I, if I copied it somewhere else, it would start to kind of, you, you can start seeing this exact same pattern. So again, what I do to, to combat that is I, hold on, I'm going to undo. What I do to combat that is really just keep, keep pulling, um, you know, re, re-pulling colors from different areas. And that's it. I'm going to zoom out. I use the magnifying glass tool and I hold down Alt to zoom out. And I think that looks pretty good. Oh, you know what else I'll do? Chest hair is really cool, but let's erase it. Why not? Just because we can and we're doing a tutorial. And who knows, maybe there are some ladies that prefer that Jersey Shore look. Less chest hair and more waxed, uh, waxed chest look. So that's it. We have some redness here, but I think we will address that later when we're working on the color. Maybe we'll take just a little bit of this redness off his cheek. Again, I'm using the rubber stamp tool. I'm going to set it back to lower opacity. I'm just kind of take the colors I like from right next to the redness and bring them over to there. A lot of times there's shininess. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. I don't want to just rubber stamp from you know this part of his head onto the shiny part because it'll it, you, you know you'll lose a lot of the lighting effects and a lot of things but I just want to lower the shininess to some degree so what I do for that is I make a new layer I'm clicking on the new layer button and I switch to my paintbrush I hit B to get my paintbrush and again you'll see over here I have a really low opacity set 15% and I have zero hardness really soft brush now with the paintbrush, if you hold down the Alt key, you get to choose a color. So I hold down the Alt key, I get the eyedropper, and I'll click over here. You can see that my foreground color is now the color I clicked on. So just like the rubber stamp, I'm going to click on a color, and I'm just going to paint over the shiny area. So I click on a color, paint over the shiny area. Click over a color, shiny area. And just like our work in After Effects and everything else, um, everything we do is, is pretty subtle, and it all adds up. And a lot of times we'll do some effect and we'll realize we have to dial it down because it's way too big. So let's rename our layer Re Shine Removal here. And let's see, when we turn it off, you see how much shinier that is? Turn it on, much less shiny. Now it's almost, I think, too flat looking now, so... What I'll do is I'll lower the opacity, you know, maybe to 40%. So we still see some of the highlights from the color, but it just doesn't look oily anymore. So can you see the before and after? It's so subtle, but just something that's that's a good little trick. Um, and maybe I'll lower the, or I'll raise the opacity a tiny bit. So okay, so now we have that. Um, now. There are a lot of kind of different workflows in terms of of how many layers you want to keep and separate. Um, I think I'm going to combine these two layers, my shine removal layer and my original layer copy right here. So I select both of them. I click on one. I hold the command key down and select the other. And I right click and choose merge layers. And let's change this back to original copy. Let's, let's call it our working copy, actually. Um, 
so now we have one layer. And why I like one layer is because we can apply filters to it. Um, now, in, I think ever since Photoshop CS2 or 3, you've been able to do, use smart filters. But I think for this tutorial, we will avoid them. So our next step is adding some sharpness to what's going on here. I like to take my copy and I make another copy of it. So I hit Command J and now I have two copies. And let's call this the sharpened layer. And with this, with this layer, I'm going to choose Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Okay, so in the sharpness pane, we have uh, three numbers, the amount, the radius, and the threshold. And usually you kind of just have to play around with these in order to find the exact uh, parameters that work for the resolution of your photo. I shot this on a Canon 5D. It's a 21 megapixel photo. So uh, I can dial these numbers probably higher than you could on a lower resolution photo. Um, so what I do here is I kind of try to find a number that looks good, um, that's just starting to look a little too too sharp, a little distracting. And I'll show you why. So let's do 2.5 pixels for the radius and 175% for the amount. The threshold, usually you leave it at 2 or 3. The threshold is is how, uh, how much tolerance the sharpening filter is going to use around edges. And the higher that is, kind of the smoother the sharpening should be. So I think that looks good. I'm going to click OK. Now, what I do with the sharpened layer is I click down here on the mask button. That makes a new layer mask, which you can see here is all white. This is the layer mask and this is our image. And what the layer mask lets us do is it lets us tell Photoshop what parts of this sharpened layer should we see and what parts should we not see. So I'm going to hold down the command key and click on the layer mask and it selects the entire mask. You can see over here I have, if you hit um, the D key on your keyboard, you'll get white as your foreground color and black as your background color. So with the entire layer selected and black as my background color, I hit Apple delete. And what this does is it fills the entire mask with black. So that means none of my mask is being applied. And if I hit Apple D, I can deselect it. So you can see this layer now does nothing because in the mask we're telling it to uh, obscure anything this sharpened layer does. And to get it to start showing up again, all we need to do is take our paintbrush. You know, we hit the B key. Let's zoom in a little bit and use the white color and we can actually start painting the sharpness back onto this photo. So you can see as I go over the eyes with a white brush it gets sharper. I'm going to go over the eyebrows too. Let's go over these glasses. Sharpness is an interesting thing because if somebody has you know skin that's not very smooth you, you don't want to sharpen it. You actually want to blur it. But eyes tend to really look nice sharpened, and hair looks nice sharpened, even teeth sometimes. So what I'm doing is I'm finding kind of little areas of detail that might benefit from being sharper. His beard, what else? Oh, the clarinet, of course. So what I'm doing is I'm just painting with white all across here. And while it doesn't seem like much is happening, because I'm a, at a pretty low opacity, so it's changing very slowly, we are actually sharpening these elements. And you can see when I turn this off, the clarinet see, becomes a little more blurry. Turn it back on, it's sharper. Let's look at his face also. Turn the sharpen layer off, his eyes are a little milky and blurry, I turn it on, his eyes are sharper. Let's paint some of the sharpness onto his hair as well. So this is a great trick where you find a filter that you like, you apply it kind of at an extreme level, and then you erase the entire thing and just start bringing it back to the parts of the image that you want it in. So here we go. Um, I'm going to make a copy of our original layer. I'm going to move it to the very top just so I can show you guys where we came from and where we are now. This was the original photo. This is the new and improved photo. Very subtle, but we 
kind of smoothed things over. We made the lights less shiny and things are looking good. So what's the next step? Well, I'm going to do one kind of extreme thing that a lot of people do not like people doing in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you anyway because I think it's fun. But uh, in order to do that, I need to apply another filter. So I'm going to merge my new sharpened layer with my original layer by selecting both of them, right-clicking and hitting Merge Layers. Uh, I'm going to call this Working Copy just so we know what we're working on. And now I'm going to go to Filter Liquify. Now this is a filter that you can use a lot of times to just kind of reshape someone's face, someone's legs, someone's slightly overweight, or there's a weird angle on them. Um, it's controversial, but people do it all the time, especially for magazine covers, and you know everyone kind of knows about that stuff. Now, my brother doesn't really have anything wrong with him, but just for fun, I'm going to make his nose a tiny bit smaller. Maybe, maybe move his face in a very, very slight way. So to do that, I'm going to use this tool. It is called the Pucker Tool. There's the Pucker Tool and the Bloat Tool. They're the opposites of each other. Bloat makes things bigger. Here we use it on his eye, as you can see. Oops. That's Bloat. And Pucker makes things smaller. So again, just like the paintbrush, you can use the bracket keys or shift bracket keys to go faster to change the size of your brush. And all I'm going to do here is zoom in a little and just pucker his nose a tiny bit. I'm going to try to be really subtle with it. Just move the sides in a tiny bit and just a slightly smaller nose. Sometimes if the eyes are drastically different sizes, which is very common. You can even see his right eye is a little white, more open than his left eye. Sometimes if it looks weird, I'll just open up an eye a tiny bit with the liquify filter to make <clears throat> things look the same size. And you can you can even kind of like move the chin a little bit. You know, bring the the chin in a little and yeah, you, you can do whatever you want here, but sometimes it can really help you take some weight off of someone. So you can see, here's before and after. Really slight, but it just kind of makes his face a little more symmetrical and kind of looks good. Next, I'm going to do some selective coloring with the dodge tool. So if I hit O, um, I can access my dodge and burn tool and the sponge tool, which is really a cool tool also. Right now we'll go with the burn tool. And Now what I like to do with the burn tool on faces is I like to use it on eyebrows. Again, I have mine set to pretty low exposure, 15%. And I just run it across the eyebrows a couple times. Now let's look at our history brush to see what that did. All that did is it darkened the eyebrows a little bit, maybe even a little too much. I'm going to pull it back a little. And I also like to use it on lips, especially on women, but on men too. It just kind of gives more contrast to the mouth. Um, and something else that's kind of fun is if you zoom way in and make your burn tool really small, you just kind of go around the edges of the eye. And it just gives the eye a little bit more contrast. So this is before and after. And oh, on this eye, you know, we really don't have kind of the edge defined. So I'm just going to kind of define it a little bit more. So here's before all of our burning and after. You can see it's kind of subtle, but it gives more kind of dynamic range to the entire face. So, whereas before it was a little bit flatter, here it just has a little more, more range. And actually, maybe I went a little overboard on his lip. So, the opposite of the burn tool is the dodge tool. I'm just going to select that. I'm just going to dodge his lips once. Maybe I'll go on his teeth too. You know, just to make them a tiny bit brighter. Now we're going to start working on the color correction. So, I always like to use curves for color correction. So I'm going to make a, a new adjustment layer. 
new curves adjustment layer. And this one is going to be um, mainly color correcting the face. So the first thing I want to do is, you know, this darkness here is nice, but I feel like it can be softened a little. So I make a curves layer, and I just pull up this middle area of it to make the entire image bright. And of course this looks ridiculous, but it will look less ridiculous when we use it selectively. So to do that, while I'm holding down the command key, I click on the mask, which will select the entire mask, and I'll do what we did before. Hit command delete, and fill up this mask with black. So again, what this means is that this curves adjustment that we just did over here is not applying to any part of the image. Now I can take my brush, Make it a little bit bigger, make sure I have white as my main color selected, and just paint some brightness onto here. So what this does is it just is going to lower, lower the darkness a little bit. And if we've painted too much, like here on his beard, I hit X to switch my foreground and background colors, and I'm going to paint black back on here to make sure it doesn't affect this area. Again, we'll go back to We'll go back to the white color with our brush. Let me brighten up this area a little too. So here's before and after. Before, after. So it just kind of makes the face a little less contrasty. But even that seems a little too extreme. So I'm going to pull the opacity of this entire layer down. So that's kind of like a, a thing I do a lot is I'll apply something in a very extreme way. And then I'll take it to where I like it. And once I'm done, I'll lower the opacity even more. Because the less stuff you can do, the, the smaller the strokes are, the better everything will be. So next we are going to uh, bring some of the brightness down. We brought up the dark areas, but let's um, darken some of the areas that are too bright. So I'll make another curves layer. I'll pull down this curve. And now his face is starting to look a little less blown out and a little better. So again, I'm going to select the entire canvas. I'm, I'm going to hit Command Delete to fill that canvas with my black color. I'm going to hit Apple D to deselect. And I'm just going to paint on this darkness onto his face using the white paintbrush. Now it's not really darkness. It's more like bringing the colors back into view. He was a little overexposed. Now I'm just bringing his face down a little bit. And this will really help us in the end when we're actually brightening his face relative to everything else. So let's look at the before and after. Before, after. This gave us a little bit more color detail in his face. Next thing I'm going to do is pull out some of that redness from his face. So I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, a new selective color adjustment layer. We'll call it Remove Redness. Now, by default, this will come with a red channel selected, a red color selected. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit of magenta and add a little bit of yellow. And you can see kind of before and after, before, after. All it does is it gives him a little bit more of a tan, a little bit more warmth and, and a glow, and a little bit less of the kind of redness that comes from shaving and sunburn and everything. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to do two more things. First thing is going to be kind of a stylized color correction. So I'll make another curves layer. I'll call it stylized color correction. And I learned this trick from this guy, Nick Campbell, at Grayscale Gorilla, which is to go to the blue channel and bring the bottom of it up a little bit. Kind of gives us a cool vintage -y feel. And then I might bring kind of the, the upper end down a little. And blue and yellow are opposite. So when I bring the blue down here, it makes the entire image a little bit yellower which I think is nice for skin tones. Then in the green channel, you don't want green in the face really, so I'm going to pull it out of the bright colors, but sometimes it's cool in the dark areas, so I'm going to 
bring it into the dark areas a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little back in the, the face. And then I will go to the red channel. And even though we removed red before, I'm going to just add a little bit right in the middle area. This way it adds it to the entire image instead of just his face. Let's go to the RGB channel, which is the main channel, where we can define the contrast. And here we can brighten things a little. Maybe add a little bit of contrast. And that's it. So let's look at before and after. Before, after. So this color correction stylized. I mean, it's very personal what people like, but I just feel like it gives it a little bit of a sheen, a pop, kind of that vintage Instamatic look uh, without really ruining too much. And let's just do one more thing before we finish up. And I think what that is going to be is to add a vignette. So I'm going to make one more adjustment layer, and I'm going to make an exposure adjustment layer. We will call it vignette. And I'm going to lower the exposure here. And this is really just by eye. I basically lower it until I feel like it's getting too dark and hard to see. With the mask of the vignette layer selected, I'm going to hit the G key. The G key selects our gradient tool. And our gradient tool paints gradients on two layers. Now we have a few options up here. We have a linear gradient. Is that what it's called? Yes. And we have a radial gradient and a few others here. The radial gradient I really love, especially for these kind of organic photo effects. And right here we have our white and our black color selected. I'm going to hit X to flip these colors. So my foreground color is black and my background color is white. Now what this means is that if I draw a gradient onto this layer, it's going to start at black and it's going to go to white. So you can see here in my panels layer what the, this vignette looks like. and it, it is black around his face, but white around the edges. So what does that mean? It means that around his face, where it's black, we're not going to have any of this exposure change. And at the edges, where it's white, we're going to have a lot of the exposure changes. Again, I kind of click right in the middle of his face, and I pull all the way to the edge, and I let go. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. I think if I click on here, you can see. This is what my vignette looks like. It's going to not affect at all the exposure here, and then it's going to affect the exposure completely at the edges. So hopefully that makes sense. So once I've drawn that, I will go back to my paintbrush, and just because we can, I'm going to customize it a little bit. I want the clarinet to be very visible, so I'm going to choose the black paintbrush, and I'm going to paint black all on the clarinet, and that just makes sure that the clarinet isn't being darkened at all. And then I'm going to hit the X key to switch to my white color, I'm going to paint his shirt with a vignette a little bit because I don't want it to take away from his face. And I'm also going to make sure that the background is underexposed. So I'm lowering the exposure on the background by painting it with white. And I'm painting the foreground with my black key, which returns it to the original exposure. Sorry, with my black color. And I think that's it. I mean, well... We'll bring his hand back a little bit so that it matches the color of his skin. I think that's pretty good. So let's look at our original, and let's look at our touched up photo. I think it's a pretty big difference. So you see, all those little subtle changes make a big difference. Um, you know, I think some of you will like this effect. Some might not like the effect. The vignette is a little extreme. You can take it off if you want to do something that, that's less stylized looking, and the color correction is a little extreme as well. But I like these effects, and um, my brother, I think, will also like them. And hopefully he won't mind that we zoomed in on him as much as we can. That's it. Thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. My brother is a musician, and there's a music video I made for him years ago on my channel that I'm going to link to right now, and you can check it out. It's for a song he wrote called Timeless. And that's it. Please leave me feedback, subscribe to my channel, let me know what you think of these tutorials, and I'm going to keep making them no matter what. So I just hope that they get better every time. So thanks again, and I will talk to you later. Bye.